What's up my comic comrades? Today we continue our series on characters appearing in the Suicide Squad movie by breaking down the history of Peacemaker. The movie of course hasn't officially released yet, but based on everything we've seen so far of John Cena's live action version of Peacemaker, he will likely be one of the breakout characters in the film. In fact, Warner Brothers and DC have already wrapped on the first season of a Peacemaker live action TV series for HBO Max, also written and directed by James Gunn, with John Cena reprising the role. So clearly the studio thinks the character is going to be popular as well. I also love how much John Cena and enjoys being Peacemaker and how they're using him to market the movie. Basically every time he does promotion for the Suicide Squad, he's in his Peacemaker costume. It's hilarious and brilliant. Anyway, today we're going to take a look through the pages of DC Comics to break down Peacemaker's history before we see what James Gunn and John Cena have done with him. And for those of you wondering, we will also be giving you Bloodsport's comic book origin on Friday to go along with the official US release of the movie. So make sure to keep an eye out for that one. But before we dive into Peacemaker's history, we want to thank Keeps for sponsoring today's episode. Well, 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 if you watched our Nightwing episode last month, Tim has entered the variant tree of trust and admitted that he too is watching his hair dome go from thick to thin. But it's okay, buddy. As we know, two out of three guys experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. The good news is that Keeps makes it easy to do something about it early on and keep your glorious man fro in place. With Keeps, it's a simple three-step process. Just go to keeps.com forward slash variant comics and start by setting up a time to talk with a licensed doctor online from wherever you are. The doc will then review your information and recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you. After that, you also get to skip the lines at the pharmacy because your treatment will be delivered right to your front door every three months. And because Keeps offers generic versions of the FDA approved medications for hair loss, you're also going to save some cash in the process. On top of that, you'll also get 50% off your first order by using our link in the description. Anyway, once you get your prescription in hand, all you have to do is follow your prescribed plan and start tracking your progress. But again, the important thing is to remember that Keeps treatments typically take between four to six months to see results. So you want to jump on as soon as possible. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you're going to save. Keeps also supports your march towards a hairier future throughout your journey journey with 24-7 access to your Keeps doctor who can answer any questions you might have. And that is just one of the reasons Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors, and why hundreds of thousands of men already trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention. So will Tim join me in Charles Xavier's hairless League of Legends, or will he hold on to his locks by heading over to Keeps.com forward slash variant comics? Stay tuned. Actually, I'm pretty sure he's already started his Keeps treatment, so the answer is really yes, but that's kind of boring, so. The point is, if you want to hold on to your mane, just click the link in the description to get 50% off your first order of hair loss treatment. Again, that's Keeps.com forward slash variant comics. But with that covered, let's talk some Peacemaker. Peacemaker first appeared in Fighting 5 issue 40 in November of 1966. He was created by Joe Gill and Pat Boyette. What's crazy about Peacemaker is he wasn't originally a DC character. He originally belonged to Charlton Comics, first appearing as a backup story in Fighting 5 issue 40, as I just mentioned. The backup story became so popular he was then given his own comic series, which lasted five issues. Peacemaker almost instantly became one of Charlton Comics' biggest superheroes. But like lots of comic book fans know, Charlton Comics wouldn't last long, and many of their characters were bought up by DC Comics, including the Blue Beetle, Captain Atom, Question, and of course, Peacemaker. Now being owned by DC Comics, DC would introduce Peacemaker through their story Crisis on Infinite Earths, making his DC Comics debut in Crisis on Infinite Earths issue 6 in 1985. As I'm sure many of you are aware, that Crisis on Infinite Earths was this massive event that destroyed DC's multiverse, resetting and revamping continuity for DC. One of the new changes was the addition of Charlton characters that were revealed to have existed on Earth 4. The Charlton characters, including Peacemaker, were then given slightly different new origins. And speaking of origins, it's time to talk about Peacemakers. Let's start with Peacemaker's original Charlton Comics origin, and then we'll talk about his modern origin from DC Comics. Peacemaker's real name is Christopher Smith. He grew up an only child, and his father was an army officer, and his mother was a research scientist. Because of this, he inherited traits from both of his parents, getting his fighter pilot skills from his dad, and his interest in science from his mother. When Smith was an adult, he became a pacifist diplomat who worked as a U.S. peace envoy for the Geneva Arms Conference. In Fighting 5, Issue 40, we learn that Chris was trying to stop the international madman and terrorist named Bork, who was rumored to illegally be selling weapons to other nations to to instigate border wars in South America. After having a polite conversation with Bork at a dinner party, Chris realizes that diplomacy will not stop him. Smith then tells his secretary, Bork will use assassins, saboteurs, bribery, and other methods to achieve his ends. I only have adequate diplomatic and legal machinery to stop him. Later on that night at Christopher Smith's private retreat high in the Swiss Alps, as the comic says, Chris tells himself 
work is unscrupulous. I have used every means at my disposal to foil his plans. I detest violence, but because of my inadequacy, thousands of innocent people may die. I must do what I have sworn never to do. There is no other way. As Chris heads into the great cellars, there is a thick steel door. No man except Christopher Smith has ever been in the room beyond it. Inside it, we see an arsenal of the most potent weapons ever devised by man. He has designed all of them, but as a man dedicated to peace and nonviolence, Christopher Smith has sworn never to use any of them. Let's pause right there for a second because Chris hates violence yet he designed some of the deadliest weapons on earth. Just kinda weird, but hey, comic books. Anyway, Chris goes on to say while picking up a gun, if Bork is permitted to continue, he will involve half the world in his senseless wars. He must be stopped. I cannot succeed with peaceful methods. I've resisted taking the step, but in this case, violence must be met with violence. Although violence is against everything I stand for, there is no other solution. And he says this as he changes into his peacemaker costume. As we see him put on the costume, a caption in the comic says, and so, although Christopher Smith has sworn never to use these implements of violence, he reluctantly assumes the role of the peacemaker. A role he resolves he will only take when there is no other recourse when violence can only be stopped by violent action. And just like that, now as Peacemaker, he uses violence and brute force to stop Bork once and for all. Now that's Charlton Comics' origin for Peacemaker, but now let's see how DC tweaked his origin. Peacemaker was introduced into the DC universe during Crisis on Infinite Earths. He was given a new origin and name. Well, new last name as he was now Christopher Smith. He was the only child of Wolfgang Schmidt and Elizabeth Lewis. His father was a munitions manufacturer and his mother was a children's author. However, there was one big twist in DC's origin of Peacemaker. Chris's dad was revealed to be a Nazi officer in the Nazi elite SS Corps, who was responsible for the deaths of 50,000 innocent people. Knowing Wolfgang was gonna be caught and arrested, he killed himself in front of Chris on his fifth birthday. Yeah, not traumatizing at all. After this, his mother Elizabeth quickly relocated both of them and legally changed their last name to Smith so no one would associate them with Wolfgang, giving us his original Charlton Comics name, Christopher Smith. When Chris turned 18, he entered the military, which seemed good for him. Christopher soon became one of the military's best soldiers. Chris soon led a scouting mission to a small village that was expected of harboring enemy troops. Once there, Chris decided it would be a great idea to start opening fire upon the entire village, killing innocent women and children. Because of this, he was court-martialed and sentenced to life in prison. While in prison, Chris was offered a pardon if he joined Project Peacemaker, which was a top-secret, high-tech, independent anti-terrorist squad. Of course, he took it, but several months in, the program was shut down. Christopher was then able to walk off the base without being caught. About a year later, Chris decided to do what the Peacemaker program taught him to do, and that's fight off terrorism. So he took the Peacemaker name for himself and became the costume vigilante anti Peacemaker. As the vigilante peacemaker, Chris became more and more violent. He then started hearing the voice of his dead father, Wolfgang, and started to believe that the souls of the people that died due to terrorism lived in his helmet and were pushing him towards more violence and retribution. Basically, Chris loved peace so much he was willing to kill for it by any and all means necessary. But even more recently for Peacemaker, in the current Suicide Squad title, which is only five issues in at the time of shooting this video, it appears DC has gone back to Peacemaker's original Charlton Comics origin. In 2021 Suicide Squad title, issue two to be exact, we see Peacemaker briefly recount his origin on the first two pages. Peacemaker tells us as follows. Arkham Asylum, mission report, current status, FUBAR. My name is Christopher Smith. I used to be a diplomat. I came to DC in pursuit of one thing and only one thing, peace. And when I couldn't find it, my new life began. Peacemaker isn't just a name, it's my mission. Whatever it takes, whatever the cost. Waller threw me into her hellhole prison on some trumped up charges made me the leader of the Suicide Squad. I'm grateful she has the same mission as mine. As I said earlier, judging by Chris's own recap of his origin, it seems very apparent that DC has gone back to the original Charlton Comics origin for the character. We even see a picture of him in a suit on the first page, looking very reminiscent of how he looked in the Fighting Five issue when he first was introduced standing in front of the Capitol building. But just like that, my comic comrades, you now know Peacemaker's origin and how it's evolved over the years. So now let's move on to story arcs and publication history. Peacemaker doesn't really have that many stories in comics. He has his original five issue series from Charlton Comics, which essentially just follows him around the world taking down terrorists. And he uses as much violence needed to keep the peace. It's probably the most important series for the character as it established all the core aspects of Peacemaker we know today. Then years later, Peacemaker would be acquired by DC, as I mentioned earlier, and introduced via the Crisis on Infinite Earth storyline. Although this introduced him to the DC universe, he didn't play a big role in the series like at all, but we do see him fighting the Anti-Monitor Shadow Demons. We would then get a four issue Peacemaker series in 1987, and in it, Peacemaker tracks down terrorists to their latest target, 
an airport in France. But like in all Peacemaker comics, his obsession with keeping the peace by any means necessary keeps growing and growing to the point where Chris's family begins to worry that the mission may cost him his sanity. This ultimately causes him to come into a confrontation with the villain, Dr. Zinzin. And while he's fighting the villain and his men, he's also fighting the ghost of his father, which still haunts him every single moment. Like he literally sees him as a ghost constantly haunting him throughout this series. Then of course, by the fourth and final issue, Peacemaker stops Dr. Zinzin from starting a global war while simultaneously overcoming his own demons. Like his ghost father. Peacemaker would appear in other series and events here and there throughout his history, but let's skip to his most modern interpretation in 2021's Suicide Squad title. In this series, Amanda Waller has made him the leader of the Suicide Squad, where him and the rest of the squad are tasked to capture the talent and bring him to Amanda Waller. We actually covered the first two issues of the Suicide Squad series, so if you want to check that out, you can do so right here. The 2021 Suicide Squad title also gives us the updated origin of Bloodsport, but like I said earlier, we'll be talking about that on Friday. Right now, it's time to take a look at Peacemaker's powers and abilities. Peacemaker is just a normal human, so he doesn't have any powers like super strength, speed, flight, or any of that stuff. But nonetheless, he does possess the physical strength and stamina of someone who does extreme physical exercise. So John Cena was perfect casting. He's also a master of various forms of hand-to-hand -hand combat and a very skilled gymnast. Being a highly decorated soldier, he's also an expert marksman, great pilot, and proficient in most weaponry. As for equipment, which helps him out when he's doing his vigilante thing, his costume is made of a thin body armor developed by himself. His helmet, which looks hilarious looking like a silver toilet bowl, is actually high tech. In the comics, it's heat and pressure proof and contains sophisticated cybernetic circuitry that allows him to operate various devices, like an all-band radio, ultrasonic blaster, surveillance devices, and even a laser. His right glove even has a tiny vial in it that when it's crushed, it becomes a fireball. Peacemaker also has a jetpack, which he uses quite often in the comics and was introduced to us in his first appearance at Charlton. As for his favorite weapon, that would be guns, any and all guns, and he carries his favorite one on his right side. But now that you have an overview of Peacemaker's powers and abilities, let's take a look at some reading recommendations. Check out Fighting 5 issue 40, Peacemaker's first appearance, Peacemaker's 5 issue Charlton Comics series, his 1987 4 issue series, and the newest series Peacemaker is in, the 2021 Suicide Squad title. That should be enough to get you all started. First up for the week of the 4th, we have Justice League issue 66, United Order Part 3. The Hall of Justice has been invaded by a cosmic threat, and it will take the full force of the United Planets, led by Superman, to defeat it without destroying Earth in the process. Now we have Avengers issue 47, World War She-Hulk rages on. The Red Room is the secret furnace where some of the world's greatest assassins and super killers have been forged and now She-Hulk is its newest recruit. Here we have Batman issue 111. Mayor Nakano announces a crackdown on mass vigilantes just as the magistrate moves against the Unsanity Collective. Meanwhile, Batman attempts to avert a bloodbath while the Scarecrow makes his final move, Fear State. It's about to begin. And finally, we have Suicide Squad issue six. Bloodsport's first mission with the squad goes pear-shaped as the crime syndicate captures Amanda Waller's agent on Earth-3. By sending in a team to bring Bloodsport home, Waller may also be able to extract another Suicide Squad member for her new team. If she plays her cards right and doesn't care who she loses in the process. And that's gonna bring today's episode of Variant to a close, but if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. It helps the channel grow. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.